let's briefly talk about the interface segregation principle. The interface segregation principle is one of the solid principles. In other words, it's the I in the solid principles. I find on one hand it's the easiest to understand, but on the other hand one of the more difficult to understand because it's so easy, so it's confusing. It's like, is that all there is? But it's probably that it's not necessarily obvious what the value is with the principle before you really start to apply it and then actually really see the value. So the interface segregation principle says that it's better to have many small interfaces rather than a few very large interfaces. Or if we restate it just to remember it easily, too many is better than too few. But what do we mean with small interfaces? Let's as usual look at an example and let's take the classic animal example. So assume that we have an animal class. Say that we have instance methods for the concepts of eating and for say moving around uh, and say for sleeping for example. So in other words we have three behaviors that the animal can perform and we call these methods on an instance basis. So we have an instance of an animal and then we call for example sleep on that instance of the animal. <clears throat> the interface segregation principle is of course highly dependent on your particular context and your particular requirements. So in some sense we can't apply it now because we don't have requirements. I'm just making up an example on the fly. But stick with me because I think you'll sort of understand what I mean. But again, remember that it's highly dependent upon the requirements. So it's not necessarily so that in, in two systems small mean the same thing. In two different systems small might mean different things. But back to the example. <clears throat> so the interface segregation principle in this case would say that we should not stick the sleep method, the signature of the sleep method, the signature of the eat method, and the signature of the move method into the animal interface. Because we are then constructing a large monolithic animal when we could in fact instead be creating interfaces for smaller roles and then give all the necessary roles to an animal instance. So what would an alternative be? An alternative could simply be to take all of these methods and create one interface per method. So in other words, we have a can eat interface, we have a can move interface, and we have a can sleep interface. And in other words, that means that the animal isn't then necessarily an eye animal, right? It doesn't implement the interface animal, but rather any particular animal implements the interfaces can move, can sleep, and can eat. But what would be the benefit of doing this, you may ask? One benefit, generally speaking, by creating small interfaces and separating out different roles and responsibilities, we are favoring composition over inheritance and we are favoring decoupling over coupling. If you think about microservices, it's much the same thing. Instead of creating one giant monolithic app, we are creating a bunch of small responsibilities and then composing them together in the way that we want to use them. But let's talk about something more hands-on. Now, it's kind of silly because in the example I chose, probably all the animals we can possibly conceive of will be able to, in some form or, or another, uh, move and eat and sleep. Probably. I mean, metabolism, right? <laughs> But, say that we are building some kind of animal simulator or we are building some kind of game, right? With this design that we currently have, with all of the small interfaces, if we would want to have other species, such as plants, for example, say trees, then those couldn't necessarily move and previously they had to be in a different inheritance hierarchy than the animals. But if we've separated the small interfaces, so that if you remember we have can move and can eat and can sleep, maybe it would be reasonable to say that trees, that some species can for example eat but they can't sleep or they can't move. So trees can't move, trees can't sleep, but trees do have some kind of metabolism. They too consume energy and produce waste. So it might seem contrived, but the point I want to make is that when we are favoring composition, when we have small roles that objects can play, it's much easier to design new objects without having to make entirely new classes. So that's it. That's most of the stuff you need to know in order to get started with the interface segregation principle. Again, remember, it's better to have many small interfaces 
than a few very large ones. Or stated super simply, too many is better than too few. So thanks for watching and as usual, if you have any questions or comments or angry outrages, do hit them up in the comments. And apart from that, if you want more cult videos like this, be sure to subscribe.